Pepper is the invisible engine of civilization. It's in our homes, cars, phones, power grids, and even in the cooling systems of massive data servers. Without it, energy, transportation, and digital technology as we know them would simply stop. Every single day, humanity produces over 100,000 tons of copper. And to get just one ton, about 200 tons of rock must be extracted. This metal is mined both deep underground and from open pits, transforming ordinary stone into gleaming plates that eventually become wires, microchips, and essential industrial components. Today, we'll journey to one of the world's largest copper production facilities to witness how this remarkable metal is born, powering the future of our planet. Copper is found in the Earth's crust, in layers of sedimentary and volcanic rock. But it doesn't appear in pure form. It exists as compounds like malachite, calcopyrite, bornite, and cuprite. To locate deposits that are economically viable, geologists conduct magnetic and chemical surveys, drill test holes, and study core samples. Once reserves are confirmed, construction begins on a massive open pit mine, a vast terraced crater carved into the planet's surface, where thousands of tons of copper-bearing rock will be extracted each day. From above, a copper mine looks almost otherworldly, giant terraced levels descending deep into the earth, with haul roads wide enough to fit a football field. Enormous dump trucks, each the height of a three-story building, crawl up and down the pit, carrying hundreds of tons of rock at a time. Before miners reach the copper ore, they must remove layers of barren rock known as overburden. Then, drilling rigs bore hundreds of deep holes, filling them with explosives. After a controlled blast, the loosened rock is loaded by hydraulic excavators, each scoop grabbing up to 80 tons of material. This mixture might contain less than 0.5% copper, but it's from this tiny fraction that the metal driving modern civilization will be born. Trucks deliver the ore to crushing plants, giant machines that grind the rock into smaller pieces. From there, the material moves into rotating mills filled with heavy steel balls. As the drums spin, the ore is pulverized into a fine sandy slurry. The slurry is then screened through vibrating sieves and classified to separate particles by size. Next comes chemistry. The finely ground material enters flotation tanks, where copper minerals are separated from waste rock using a special mix of reagents. Flotation is the beating heart of copper recovery. In these tanks, water, air, and frothing agents are added, causing copper-rich particles to attach to air bubbles. As the bubbles rise, they form a thick metallic foam on the surface. This copper-laden froth is skimmed off, filtered, and dried to produce a concentrate containing 25-30% copper. Thousands of tons of this concentrate are then sent to the smelting plant, where copper begins its transformation from mineral to metal. At the smelter, the copper concentrate is mixed with silica sand, known as flux, which helps remove impurities. The mixture is then heated in massive furnaces to temperatures above 1200 degrees to 200G. Inside, molten copper sinks to the bottom, while lighter impurities rise to the surface as slag. The result is blister copper, about 60% pure. It's still far from perfect, but it marks the first true stage of the metal's birth. Next, it's time for refining. The molten copper is poured into a second furnace, where temperature and chemical balance are precisely controlled. Here, the purity rises to about 98%, and the liquid metal is cast into large slabs called anodes each weighing roughly 300 kilograms. These glowing blocks are cooled under jets of water, lifted out by hydraulic systems, and sent off to the final, most delicate stage of all, electrolytic refining. In large electrolytic cells, 
Copper anodes are suspended opposite thin starter sheets, known as cathodes. The tanks are filled with an acidic copper sulfate solution. When an electric current passes through, copper ions leave the anode and deposit onto the cathode surface. Over about 10 days, each sheet grows to a thickness of 2.5 centimeters and a weight of over 120 kilograms. The resulting metal is 99.99% pure copper, ready to become electrical wire, microchips, or motor windings. After electrolysis, the pure copper is melted once again, this time in its final form. The molten metal flows into long casting molds, cooling gradually into solid copper billets up to 6 meters long. These billets are then rolled and stretched into thin copper rods. Finally, the rods are coiled into massive spools of wire, the kind that will one day carry electricity through homes, factories, subways, and entire cities. At this stage, every batch of copper undergoes rigorous testing. Factory laboratories are equipped with spectrometers, microscopes, and purity analyzers. Experts check for impurities, analyze the crystal lattice structure, and measure mechanical strength, even the slightest deviation, and the batch is sent back for re-smelting. Copper used in electrical networks or electronics must be flawless. A microscopic crack can mean a loss of conductivity and a system failure. Quality control at this level is closer to precision craftsmanship than industrial work. Everything must be perfect. Here's a remarkable fact. Around 35% of all copper in the world comes not from ore, but from recycled material. Old wires, pipes, and electronic components are collected and sent to recycling plants, where they go through the same stages, sorting, melting, and electrolysis. Copper doesn't lose its properties, even after dozens of recycling cycles. That makes it one of the most sustainable materials in modern industry. Every old cable or scrap of metal can be reborn as part of a new power grid or a smartphone circuit. It's not just resource efficiency. It's a step toward a closed loop economy where waste becomes raw material. Copper production is one of the most energy intensive industries, yet it's rapidly evolving toward sustainability. Modern smelters now use closed water systems where every drop is filtered and reused. Gas and dust capture units, preventing harmful emissions. Renewable energy sources to power furnaces and pumps. Even byproducts, slag and dust, are processed to recover gold, silver, and other valuable elements. And the sulfur gases released during smelting are converted into sulfuric acid, a vital industrial reagent. Step by step, Copper production is becoming part of the green economy, rather than its enemy. After final melting and casting, the metal takes many different forms, depending on its future use. Some plants produce wire rods, long copper strands that will later become electrical cables. Others make sheet copper for architecture and construction. And some specialize in tubular copper, used in air conditioners, refrigerators, and plumbing systems. Each form has its own standards, thickness controls, and traceable documentation. From the factory floor to the final product, the shape of copper defines its destiny to heat, to cool, to transmit power, or to decorate cities with its timeless glow. Once the copper is ready, its next journey begins. Transportation, Finished cathodes, rods, and ingots are shipped to global warehouses and ports. Massive container ships, trains, and trucks carry the metal across continents to China, Europe, the United States, where it becomes part of electronics, cars, and appliances. Every batch has a unique identification code, allowing its journey to be tracked from mine to manufacturer. Copper isn't just a material. It's a vital current in the global economy, driving energy, technology, and progress. Today, 
Copper stands at the heart of the clean energy revolution. Without it, there can be no solar panels or wind turbines to carry electricity, electric vehicles, which contain four times more copper than conventional cars, charging stations and power grids that deliver energy to the cities of tomorrow. Copper remains the ultimate conductor of heat and electricity, and thanks to it, humanity can move toward a sustainable, electrified world. In a sense, green energy runs on red metal. Copper production is a symphony of science, technology, and human skill. From blasting rock and smelting ore, to electrolysis and recycling, every stage reflects precision, strength, and ingenuity. All so that billions of people can have light, power, and connection. When you turn on a lamp, charge your phone, or drive an electric car, remember, somewhere deep underground began the journey of a tiny particle of metal that now connects the entire human race, quite literally. Copper isn't just a material. It's the nervous system of civilization 